Brian is going to talk about Band-Aids Don't Fix Bullet Holes. So here we go, give it up to Bob. Band-Aids Don't Fix Bullet Holes refers to big problems, big holes that we create in our life, mistakes that we make, and how we try to put a Band-Aid over them. Now, I'm a jock, or let me rephrase that, I was a jock. <laughs> I played all the usual sports and went on to play college football. And I lived in locker rooms. And in locker rooms, we told all of the usual gay jokes. We talked about faggots. We talked about sluts and whores. We talked about butches and dykes. And if I wasn't telling the joke, I was laughing the loudest. My youngest daughter was a tremendous athlete, went on to play college basketball. And during her senior year, her older brother and I are sitting in the stands watching one of her games. I said to my son, do you think she has any plans? This is her senior year. She's got about a semester of school left. Has she talked about what she wants to do? You know, I'm a dad, jobs and stuff. Has she talked about any of that? Dad, you know she's gay. What are you talking about? Dad, she's gay. But she's so afraid of you. She's so afraid of your attitude. She's so afraid of how you're going to react to it that she can't talk to you. But I know she wants to. I was so ashamed, I was so hurt. Not that I had a gay daughter, but they didn't playing the tough guy, playing this tough dad. I had created an atmosphere in my own family where my little girl couldn't talk to me. Band-aids don't fix bullet holes. This would take more than a band-aid. Through many long and sleepless nights, I tried to think how I could reach out to my daughter. How could I bridge this gap? What kind of a large band-aid could I come up with? Fate took over, and in the mail, I received a wedding invitation from a buddy of mine that I played college football with. His daughter was getting married in Chicago, and I happened to be goddaughter, godfather to his daughter, and of course I would attend the wedding. My daughter had graduated from college, was in her first job, and was living in downtown Chicago. So I called her and said, honey, I have this wedding. Would you consider going as my date? Oh, I'd love to. Dad, that'd be fun. In fact, the wedding is so far out in the suburbs, I better get a hotel room. We can spend the night, and I'll drive you back into the city the next morning. You, you, you see, we dads, we can be pretty sneaky <laughs> when we're trying to find something more than a Band-Aid. We attended the wedding, we had a great time. I even got to dance with my little girl. The next morning in the hotel room, I got up early and I ordered room service breakfast. I said, honey, I'm gonna get in the shower if the food arrives, just sign the ticket. We can have a nice, quiet breakfast here in the room, and we can have some conversation. We can even talk about your gay lifestyle if you'd like. Of course, then I ran into the bathroom, locked the door, <laughs> and turned the shower on. You see, I needed to think, I needed to prepare myself, but I needed to give her some time too to prepare for the onslaught from a cold-hearted, pig-headed father. 
Dad, I tried, she said. I went to homecoming. I went to prom. I had lots of dates. I kissed lots of boys. Too much information there, stop. <laughs> it's not me, Dad. It never was me. You understand something, little girl. A father's love has no limits. Has no boundaries. It's unconditional. You are my daughter. I love you more than life itself. If this is you, then you understand that I am here for you and I will always be. So Lincoln, you're gonna leave here tonight and what are you gonna leave with? Leave with this. The Bible doesn't say love only the tall ones. The Bible doesn't say love only the ones with brown hair. The Bible says simply, this above all, love one another.